What an exciting time that we get to meet again. We haven't been together for like, what, a month or so? About a month or so. You know, the whole, the, the, the whole of August. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've been very active, as usual, with a lot of kingdom things, uh, dealing with Haiti, dealing with Afghanistan, Uganda, Mission Harvest America. And uh, what a joy for you to be, um, God to use you continually to be all about his kingdom and his people. And I guess um, we could just, you know, talk about everything that's going on because. You well, you know, know, Dr. Mike, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, first of all, it's a real privilege and honor to be here with you always, as always. Yes. And World Trumpet Television has become a very key, very vital part of what we do yeah. with Mission Harvest America. Your vision, your passion for humanitarian aid and, yes. and, and advancing the kingdom of God around the world yeah. is our passion as well. Yeah. And this is just a vehicle that we that we do that. So as you know, since, yeah. we, since we last met, so many things have happened. Right. Uh, Uganda went on a total lockdown. Exactly. And uh, that affected what we were able to do in the interim. Although I always like to tell people, um, God's always makes a way. Yes. God's not limited yes. by what happens with COVID or with, yeah. with government. Uh, God makes a way to, to minister to the needs of His people. Amen. So we're constantly seeking God for yeah. wisdom and divine strategies, which is what I love to do with you, is that we strategize for the kingdom of God. Do you know that ever since we launched this network, we've never had a, a day off? <laughs> it's been very active. You know, all of us, uh, Pastor Michael, we are down um, in Louisville, pretty much. We started out there when you were bringing all the truckloads of food uh, to the many pastors that created a good synergy of unity, and then all of them were distributing it right. you know, in different cities. And ever since then, it's never stopped. Well, and, and that's, that's, that's the good part. Yeah. That's what we hope to see, not only here locally, but, but regionally nationally. Yeah. As you know, our goal is to help network networks, exactly. Christian organizations, churches, agencies, and individuals yeah. that have anyone with a heart and a vision and a passion right. that Jesus had for caring for those that are hurting, yes. those that are poor, those that are in crisis. And there's crises all over the world. All, all of the world and, and it's only going to increase. As we read the Word, we understand that, that crisis is on the increase. And I told... Um, I think it was yesterday, but I think maybe we we're talking with you, you know, and uh, I feel like even when we started Wild Trumpet and the Lord was telling us that the humanitarian arm of it is going to be in the forefront, I sensed it. And then right a few months later, I meet you and you're talking the language of disaster preparedness and response and and help and everything like that. I'm like, wow, this is... And you know, Dr. Mike, really, it's it's just doing what the church is supposed to do. Right. It's kingdom business. Right. And a lot of churches do a lot of wonderful things, not taken away from that at all. Yeah, yeah. But I believe God's saying this is a time in our history right. to move into, into a new dimension that is relevant to and in keeping with the the magnitude of crisis. That's true. And, that and uh, there's so much going on right now. Right. And I've said for a long time that the Lord tells us to prepare in faith, not fear. Yeah. Uh, so I see a lot of Christians in fear. I like that. Prepare faith, not fear. And, and I see so many Christians that are afraid. They're yeah. in fear. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I know right away God wants to bring peace into their lives. So yeah. we can teach people to prepare physically, but if they're not prepared spiritually, then they, there you go. at best they've only got half the message. Yes. Because it's to be, I would say, first of all, prepared spiritually. Yeah. Because if we're prepared spiritually, we can believe God for all the rest. That's true. And so we, we're teaching people the, the, what we call nitty-gritty, where the rubber meets the road working yeah. of how to respond to a disaster. Yeah. The church has, has been insulated in many cases and right. isolated right. from disaster response and crisis response and preparedness yeah. that they don't know how to to overcome some of the obstacles they're encountering, uh, whether in other countries as well as here in our own exactly. nation. Exactly. No, I look at it this way: is that every time there's a I remember. Let me let me even bring it closer. Um, you remember in Houston when the disaster hit and people was, they lost everything, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm sorry to say, 
when the, some organizations called the church, local church, and told them, hey, would you have an opportunity to help house people? And within the logistics, that didn't come quick, and the news media pounced on Lakewood Church. Yes. You know, and they, they, they made sure, because this is a humongous church, a great church, it does a lot of, you know, disaster things around the, the but just because they never got the letter quick. Yes. All of a sudden, what should have been a good thing turned out they came up after, you remember that, and we're telling them, oh, Lakewood, they, they put it in the news. Lakewood Church we didn't want to mm -hmm. take in the people. Yeah. Same with the Louisiana and you know right. different places. Right. When crisis happens, the world's looking at the church. Mm -hmm. You have been on the forefront for almost forty years, calling on the churches and leaders to be prepared to be the arms and feet of Jesus. You know, in these in these places. Mm -hmm. But most times we come in second. Right. The world system comes in so quick because right. they want a name and they know what they want and they, they use politics around all of those right. kind of things. And yet the church should well, be, and you know that well. There, there was a great lesson, and this is a really good point you bring up because it's probably one of the least discussed in Christian circles. Right. See, but in today's world, with social media, instant communication, when a crisis hits, you must be prepared with your be prepared. with your response you and your to. message yeah. of response because yes. if you don't come forth with a response, somebody's going to do it for you. Right. And now that's that's some of what happened to Lakewood. Exactly. And it happens not just with churches; it happens with corporations. If you find a corporate crisis, we can remember some some well-known corporate crises in America that they simply weren't prepared and when the media exactly. showed up they had no no response yes. or if it exactly. was a response it was a canned response right. and and didn't ring true and didn't come true and they the media wants to spin it and the they media spin spins it, it exactly it makes money the advertisers and stuff and before you know it exactly and everybody's looking at oh the church doesn't help the exactly. church doesn't do that so you, know? so you and I've talked about this I mean yeah. it's like just for example the hurricane hits Louisiana yeah. Ida hits, immediately my telephone starts ringing because people know I do faith-based crisis response. Right. So either I'm going to respond or, or, or they're going to say, well, you know, are you going to do anything? Are you? Right. So we immediately, you can't just rush into a disaster before it happens exactly. because you don't even know what the needs are. Exactly. But you have to teach people that you can't do that. Right. Right. Uh, and then that doesn't mean that you're not preparing behind the scenes. Yeah. You may be preparing logistically. You may be on the phone setting up staging areas. You may be networking with other, other right. agencies or organizations in the area. Yeah. And you're doing all that, but not even the federal government goes in to provide a response before they know what the exactly. needs are. They do what's called a damage assessment. You got to know what where the damage is, how much it is, extensive it is, and who is most impacted. So you, before you even know what the needs are, is it you that told me that in Louisiana before the first storm, that big one also, that you know when people hit and they were in the dome, the scrambling, you know, that the federal government brought in a lot of food. But even with all of that help that came in from all over the country, my, most of that food rot because it could not get to the people. The navigation of go, taking it in. Th this has happened in a lot of disasters. One of the things, because American people especially are so generous, they're very, very good. You know, if you if you put out a plea for help, if we like this crisis response, any catastrophic event, Americans will they'll give, they'll, they'll give. and they'll donate. But if they're not instructed or trained or informed on how to do that, yeah. what happened in one instance that you're talking about, and that I think I did share with you, was with Hurricane Andrew. Yeah. When it came through Homestead, Florida, Americans just responded in kind, and yeah. I mean, they poured tons right. of clothing right. to go to Homestead, Florida. The problem was, as generous as people's hearts were and as wonderful it is that they gave, the problem was, there's no there's no mechanism on the receiving mm -hmm. end mm -hmm. to sort through all those clothes exactly. and do the distribution. Right. They, they are in the middle of a crisis. The immediate need there at that moment was not for clothes. The clothes needed to be staged and they did need to get there, right. but the sequence of events is extremely important right. and that's what we need to teach the churches so that they're not do, doing a, what I call a knee-jerk yeah. reaction because yeah. there's a difference between a reaction and a response. Right. We want to respond and we want to do it 
uh, lovingly. We want to do it intelligently. We want to do it to the glory of God, which means Powerful. that whatever we give is not going to waste. We're not giving just to just to get attention. Yeah. We're, we're saying God has a plan to meet the needs of these people. Right. Let's find out what those needs are. So instead of me trying to give you something you don't need, yeah. and I'm going to give God credit for it, and you're like, well, what am I going to do with that? Right. Then we say, Mike, what is your need? And you tell me the need, and then we say, okay, we've got resources here, here, and here. Exactly. We've already staged, and then we meet the specific need. You know, I'll just speak to my mind because I think what we are telling the body and those who are watching us is that God's calling us to the forefront as foot soldiers, as the feet of Jesus. He's calling us because we're up against a major crises yes. that are before us. And he's calling the church to be, you know, get out of the four walls and be about our Father's, our Father's kingdom. Absolutely. But much so, as you continue to speak, I hear Jesus tested his disciples in the area of distribution. Yes, he did. And twice they failed, and three times they were tested by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, okay, where is it in Scripture? I tell them, he comes across the 4,000, mm -hmm. and he's asking them, like you always ask, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. The people are here, they are hungry, and the first question they told him, hey, let's send them out. You brought them in, out here in the desert. You knew, you know, if we bring them out, of, see, there's an excuse there. Yes. I'm asking you a question about what we can do for them yes. because I am the need provider for them. Yes. Don't tell me that we send them back. That was their mentality. Mm -hmm. What happened there? A miracle took place yes. and provision came. That's the backdrop of what we're talking about today. Absolutely. Is when God gives us an opportunity as the body of Christ to believe in provision mm -hmm. that people's needs in our cities mm -hmm. or in those crises wherever they are, mm -hmm. you know, the storm, uh, they awakened to it. They say the church is here. Yes. They loved on us. They didn't try to put a hook in our mouth and tell us, first give your life to the Lord, then I give you money. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I do this. They just loved on us. We saw Jesus. Yes. The fourth the second time was when he paid the five thousand. Yes. Again he's asking them, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do? And Andrew's telling him this and Phil and said, But I mean, what do we have a little boy here with the five five you know, loaves of bread and stuff? And he's looking at them and saying, they, they never passed the test. And here's how, <laughs> how I know they never passed the test. Because <laughs> right. he did it twice. Yes. And he's asking them pretty much the same question. Which happens every single day with this unique ministry that you have dark. And I know you faced a lot of uh, resistance because you're trying to pull an army of help from all corners and say, let's get this done. Some people get the vision. Some people don't. Some don't. Don't. You, you know, know and, and that's the interesting thing to me is that... that in, in those accounts you're talking about, what did Jesus tell the disciples? He said, you feed the people. You feed the people. You feed the people. You know, it's easy for us to say, well, you feed and, the and people. And then he tells them this. If you can get the men to sit down, mm -hmm. we'll fix everybody. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so, you know, here we are. And what we really, what a real passion of mine, as you know, is to bring unity among churches and, right. and right. Christ-centered organizations right. and faith-based community. Because the dynamic is that when we work together right. exponentially, we accomplish much more than any of us could by ourselves. Yeah. And it's, it's a well-known fact, not only in federal disaster programs or uh, state-run programs right. or regional, it's true in the body of Christ that any, if we, go do, we can all go do something. Right. But if we do it and we choose to do it by ourselves, we've yeah. automatically limited yes. the extent by which we could more effectively Ex expound and, ex and, and advance the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and when we realize that our mission is a kingdom of God mission, and we're not just trying to build our organization and our name and our reputation, exactly. but we're going to work together. And by the grace of God, I'm seeing more and more come on board. Now, as you know, the database we built yeah. facilitates unity among God's people, among churches, uh, because to participate, they not only have access to resources that, that we can help provide, right. But they also provide resources. In other words, it's, it's a reciprocation. Yeah. And isn't that the way yeah. of the kingdom? Relationships are reciprocal. Yeah. There's no one such thing as a one-sided relationship. That's true. That is true. And so God's bringing us. See, and the more and more we enter into these days of what I call Jacob's troubles, the days of trial and tribulation, right. These, right. Whether, 
whether you think we're in the end times or not, we know statistically, even government statistics, mm -hmm. that uh, catastrophic events are on the increase, the disasters on the increase. If we believe the Word of God, then, then that's all the incentive we need yeah. it, is to get prepared. How do we minister and how many opportunities will we miss if we don't get prepared to minister to people at their most vulnerable point when right. in a time of crisis? Right. That's when they're most receptive and susceptible to hear about the love of Jesus Amen. and the things of God, not only for disaster victims, but how about disaster workers who are unique individuals, by the way, not everybody can go dig through rubble and, 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 and sacrifice themselves in that kind of mission field. Yeah, but, yeah. but those individuals are there. Yeah. And some of them are being used by God and they don't even know it, Dr. Right. Mike. Yeah. They, they just know that it's in their heart to do good. And I'm like, if that brother can do that and he doesn't even really know the Lord, how much more yeah. should the church be out here responding in the love of Jesus do you to know, the crisis? Do you know, Doc, it's like people will hear us right now and uh, some will feel like, oh, they're trying to push us to do something. Oh, yeah. they're trying to, you know, I mean, everybody wants to pick up a different vibe about what they hear, but yet the message is so simple. Simple. The need is right before us. It's simple. And God is calling us to go exactly. for it. Exactly, and, and, it, and it's really not complicated. And it's not complicated. It's, it's do, you, do you love like I love? Will you, will you be my extended yeah. compassion? Right. It's a compassion I, ministry. Will, you, will I, you share compassion with those in crisis? It's that simple. I tell leaders today, we've all gone through the pandemic. It's eaten up a whole lot of things. It's changed our church views and our finances and everything. And I say, Lord, what, what does that mean? What are you doing? I say, I'm doing a new thing. I say, well, Lord, it doesn't look like what we expected before. And, but what, what I get out of it when I'm encouraging pastors is that God has brought the world so close to us now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have to go back and reach it. Absolutely. You it, know? It, it's like we hear so many things that, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we saw a move of God. We saw these things. We used to talk about end times coming. Well, yeah. well in my opinion, is they're here. Yeah. You know, we've crossed the threshold. We know crises have increased. So now the Lord just speaks to me and says, well, that was then, this is now. It wasn't wrong for then, but it's not necessarily right for now. Yeah. What is right is very simple, is love the people, heal the brokenhearted, Amen. pray for the sick, cast Jesus out the demons, told us to do that. raise the dead, do what Jesus did exactly. in the midst. And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, he was constantly navigating through crisis, people in crisis. Right. Not whether it, whether it's a woman at the well in crisis, whether it's a lame laying by the by the pool in crisis, over and over the lame man laying by the temple gate right. in crisis. crisis. You know, maybe it wasn't your crisis, but it was his crisis. Yeah. And 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 isn't it our responsibility as compassion caregivers, like the good Samaritan, he met the crisis. Child of God, before we close, I think you've had from Doctor Adams. His passion, his whole life has been sought out to see transformation, total transformation in the lives of people, not only just in North America, but around the world. We're so blessed by Mission Harvest America that is here to not only you know, do just the mission, but awaken others to be about the Father's Kingdom because you've been pastoring and you've been you know, before pastors and telling them, let's do this, let's, let's get out. I'm so happy that you and I get to work together through Wild Trumpet, you know, to s reach the world for Jesus. I believe this is a very pivotal season and time we're in. Yes. And I haven't heard you say, God, I can do it. Yes. You said, I will go. I will serve. Yes. I'll see people saved and changed and everything like that. That, that's the attitude that God blesses, you know, at this point in time. I believe that in the next coming weeks and months before we close this year, there's great mighty things that are going to happen through your ministry and this very hour to champion the cause of Christ because this is the most needed urgency of seeing the kingdom expand. And uh, I'm delighted to have this conversation, you know, that God has helped us and we, we've done so many you know, on the network, and we're gonna, 
actually do even more and more and more to be in front of the people and tell them it's our father's business to serve. It's, it's the know. father's business. It's about, yeah. Thank you for your heart, your passion, because you've been such an encouragement and an inspiration. And it is that exactly. We look for people with a like vision, purpose, and passion. Yeah. And, and it's really, to me, the heart of God for reaching a hurting people. Amen. And that is what the gospel is about. If we, if we go into all the world, we have to realize we're going into a hurting world. I know. And we either be prepared to minister to those hurts right. and those needs or, or we're not prepared. That's and true. so my message, my heart, is that together, for any pastors, any church workers, any Christian businessmen, any Christian organizations, everybody, everybody. It, that you've got a heart and a passion for this kind of thing, give us a call. Th together, we don't claim and never have and never will that we can do it by ourselves. But we do declare and proclaim that together, to the glory of God, we can do whatever God sets before us. Where can people find you? In? You can reach us at, uh, uh, the best way right now is on our website. Right. Is, which is mission help, missionharvestamerica.com. There's all kinds of information there. We also have Heartland Response, which is a part of our training and education arm that's under Mission Harvest America. We train chaplains to respond to crisis, right. to disasters. We, we've trained a lot of chaplains. Amen. This last year, as you know, we're the law enforcement chaplaincy, crisis response chaplaincy. We do a corporate chaplaincy, all kinds of chaplain yeah. training. Yeah. And we do certifications in those chaplain programs. So we have a lot of education, right. a lot of training available Amen. with my partner, Dr. Edward Smith, that you know. And so uh, you can reach us. You can find out more through missionharvestamerica.com or heartlandresponse.org. And, and uh, our phone number and contact information is there. You contact us. We would love to have every church in America come every on board and say, let's be a part. Amen. I'm excited about that. Thank you. Bless you. Wild Trumpet is a ministry and a network that champions the cause of Christ through humanitarian missions, mighty moves of God, and taking the gospel to the nations. We are so delighted to have this very candid conversation with Dr. Gary Adams, mission, the president of Mission Harvest. We are looking forward to more. Thank you. I believe, actually, what we have forgotten to tell the viewers is that you're already packing a container going to Haiti. Yes, we've you know, got right containers now, so being packed. We've actually got, uh, Dr. Mike, we've got three containers ready to ship to Haiti right. in Jacksonville, Florida right, right. now. Right. And we're going to be loading up containers here in the, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex so we can use any churches anywhere in the United States, uh, especially in Texas or Florida. If you want to participate with us, we, we ship out of ports in Florida. We'll ship out of Port of Houston. Yeah. We're going to be shipping to Haiti. And we're going to be shipping, as you know, to, to Uganda. Uganda. We've got containers. Right now, I've got nine containers that need to be shipped. Amen. And, and uh, we can get the goods, Dr. Mike. We can get, there are people that will donate. Right. We just need people to step up and say, we, we want to be a part of it that can help us with the logistics. And, and uh, as you know, that, that takes a lot to do that. But what I'll say is God always makes the way. Amen. God bless you. We we'll look forward to seeing you again, to coming to your home each week. Thank you. Watch out.